Hi, writers. Today, I have the extreme pleasure of welcoming my dear friend, old friend. We've been friend a long time. We've been friend a long time. <laughs> uh, Florence Williams. And she also happens to be an extraordinary writer. She's a nonfiction writer, and she writes a lot about science and emotion. I mean, she's written magazine articles for everybody, but her first book was Breasts, A Natural and Unnatural History. It was about breasts. Her second book was The Nature Fix, which won millions of awards, right? Um, actually, Breasts won more awards, but The Nature Fix sold more copies. Well, that's an award in itself, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and now you're coming out in February, I believe, with, take it away. My new book is called Heartbreak, A Personal and Scientific Journey. What precipitated uh, this line of inquiry um, was the ending of my 25-year marriage. Um, I had met the man who would be my husband when I was 18 years old on my first day of college, knowing very little about the ways of love or anything else. And um, we were together for three decades. And then um, when it ended, um, which was largely his idea, um, it just really, uh, it really was an earthquake for me emotionally. And I couldn't even believe how much it hurt and how much my body even, um, you know, sort of carried that pain in terms of weight loss and sleeplessness and um, emerging illness. You know, it was really, I came to learn through the course of researching and writing the book that I was experiencing trauma, that heartbreak is trauma. And I had never really taken heartbreak that seriously before. You know, I only knew it as a reader of literature or, you know, reading Shakespeare or whatever, listening to songs on the radio uh, and thinking, oh, it's just, you know, it's just this big drama and you get over it really fast and it's not that big deal. And uh, I was wrong, <laughs> it turns out. So you um, write a lot about how nature heals us. In fact, that's what your last book and this book are in large part about. And you appear to live in a forest. <laughs> <laughs> I just live under a painting of a field and next to a potted plant. <laughs> I'm trying to, I wish I lived in a forest. <laughs> right, don't we all? Um, but I'm wondering, I'm really interested in, because I teach creative writing, I'm interested in the healing power of writing. And you, we all hit really big bumps in life. We get divorced, we get hurt, we get ill. We realize that our childhood wasn't the idyllic thing that it looked like in the Christmas album and all these monsters start coming out. However, if we're fairly, in other, in other ways, fairly stable, going back and delving in when your, your physical body and your actual heart and emotions are in a safe place, it's actually pretty productive. Um, I agree. And I, I think that it is also possible to find a sort of good way through writing about it when it's very raw and fresh. So, but did you but, experience but, that writing while writing heartbreak? And if so, can you tell us about that part? Well, what I can tell you is that one of the psychologists I interviewed was looking at people who have recently broken up from mm -hmm. a romantic relationship and are you know, somewhat crushed by it. Yeah. And it, this is so interesting. He, he put them through a series of writing exercises to find out if it was helpful to them. Right. And what he found is that there are two different sorts of writing exercises, one of which was helpful and one of which wasn't. So the one that wasn't so helpful was really open-ended where he was basically like, write about your pain. Right that wasn't so helpful. What was helpful is if he asked people to sort of tell a story about their breakup. What did it, what does it mean? What does your breakup mean moving forward? Find some meaning from it mm -hmm. um, or tell the story of your split. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of specific questions that required some cognition, you know, the thinking parts of your brain as opposed to just the raw emotion. Right. Um, that was helpful. So, 
Interesting. You, but you asked about my book and, and in my book, I, I was trying to write some about the emotion yeah. and I was at a point for much of the book where I didn't know what the meaning was. I was like, what does this mean? I, I don't know what happened. What ha What just happened? Like, I don't know. And it hurts. And I think that that was important for the book because it is a kind of raw memoir, but that wasn't so helpful for my healing. I mean, I was sitting in that pain a long, long time. I mean, really for three years while I was writing the book and I would have to go back <laughs> and rewrite it and listen to my tapes and read my notes and read my journals. Um, it was really hard. I was able to, I think, do it because I had a lot of support on the outside. So I had friends, I had my kids, I had a therapist, you know, there were places where I could go to sort of down, you know, um, take a breather and kind of recover a little bit. Now, having said all that, what was really helpful to me psychologically was finishing the book <laughs> because <laughs> I was so tired of my own heartbreak and so sick of it and so ready for it to be over that when it, when the book was over, I really felt like the heartbreak was over. I was like, I am done with heartbreak. That but is those so, three years were tough. Yeah, I totally get it because I think you do in order to be a a narrator that people can bond to, you have to show your vulnerability, right? Right. And then you but in order to heal from the story, you have to write a story that makes sense in which you eventually prevail. That's right. And I and and another psychologist, Helen Fisher, said the same thing to me. She said, you have to tell yourself a story. Mm -hmm. Just make it up. She said, it doesn't matter if it's the truth, if it's not what really happened, but you need the story. Like you need to tell yourself this sort of story so that you can move on. But it goes back to like cave times, I think, you know, where we're sitting around going, where are we? <laughs> you know, what? Why is it dark sometimes and then light sometimes? You know, back to that basic of, a wonderment, you know, like, how did I end up here? So we start telling stories. And, you know, when I teach a heroine's journey class, and somebody's in a really tough spot, and we get to the part of the heroine's journey where the heroine starts to prevail, she gets out of the ditch of mud, in which she has spent many weeks in my class, I guess, or many hours if she's taking a shorter class. But, um, and it's the part where they start prevailing that they, they go, I can't do this part. And I'm like, that is so interesting. Well, if it hasn't happened yet, write it the way you want it. I mean, what do you have to lose? And if you write it the way you want it to end, you um, make it more likely in my non-advanced uh, understanding of neurology is that if you write it the way you want it to end, you actually prime your, your synapses to welcome that ending more quickly. And in fact, you might direct your own future. You might, to a certain degree, be a little bit of a wizard. Uh, I think that's brilliant, Lisa. And I think that's really cool that you've witnessed that in your students because- I, People have done amazing, like they've written the script for an amazingly courageous move they have to make in it. And then they- that, so. that is amazing. I mean, I really think that healing is about, ultimately about self-agency, right? We know that resilience comes from being the author of your own story. Right. So you have taken that kind of metaphor and made it literal. And I think it's such an interesting balance that you're bringing up that partially you have to just bleed and then partially you have to make sense of it. And I think that is life. I think that is a recipe to getting through hard times. And apparently in your case, it's the recipe to writing a really good book. <laughs> And well, I, I did. I needed some distance. You were right. I needed some distance from it. My first draft, my first two drafts, my first three drafts were too raw. You know, they weren't, um, they didn't have enough sort of future perspective of, hey, reader, it's okay, because I come out of this eventually in right. one piece. Um, because your reader needs to know that. They don't just want to hear, they don't, they can't just see the blood. Your reader needs to know that you're okay eventually. Right, because they're reading it for a roadmap in the, for the ways that, in which they are not okay. And, and frankly, just oh. anger and rage and pain mm -hmm. are not that fun to read. And they don't really make for great writing. 
great to talk to you and best of luck with the awesome book that you just got a starred review from Publishers Weekly for. That's a really rave review. I think it's wonderful. Yay. Thanks, Florence. Thank you, Lisa.